I don't think there is a threat of coronavirus. I think there perhaps is a manufactured virus that's been released into the society. training regime, the way I work, everything like that. So it's been a massive shift in life for me, especially here in London. Some people have been hit hard, these and stuff. I was really happy to do the GCSEs like last year, this year. This year, it's a bit, it's a bit um, inconvenient. I'm a care worker. So during lockdown, I still have to work. Uh, and I've got a three-year-old boy as well, so I have to be very, very cautious. For me, it is what it is, you know? Uh, I see it every day, how it impacted my life, not much, because I still do the job that I do before COVID. Just have to take extra precautions now, you know. Um, but for my patients, they're completely different. COVID-19 has affected me in a lot of ways, like I've got family sick in different countries because I can't travel to different countries because of COVID. They're turning like, they're shutting down airports. It's crazy. In that first week from working from home, you kind of thought it was temporary, it might last a couple of weeks, yeah. maybe a month max, and now that it's just still dragging on. Mostly from university, because we have to stay at home now, can't go lectures. Um, normally we don't want to go lectures, but now we kind of miss them. It really affects me in school, like, um, you have to wear masks almost everywhere. Isolation. I'm a very social animal and it's change this perception of meeting up with other people and you know having fun and things so it's um, I don't like the isolation. Actually had a positive impact on me because the whole lockdown thing I'm like I feel like I had too much time to myself. So I want life to get moving on again. Uh, I've moved down I've just moved down to London to study acting and obviously we don't want COVID to get in the way of that because you, you need to be in person uh, to, 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 to do that properly. Sure. I used to work in a hairdresser Massively, I mean I've lost like 10 hours a week of work because um, so I work at the bar so obviously the 10pm close has just really disrupted my pay and we're both uni students and we both do practical arts so we can't use the facilities and we're in once a week and it's just, yes, it's the best. <laughs> Obviously we've had a lot of online classes and we could have got paid for stuff. We could be doing our home. Because I'm working in aviation so all my flights are cancelled usually. In fact, it's affected me quite a bit but also not a lot. Like I've still been able to skate, do the things I love. You know, I've had a lot more time to spend with my family. Uh, school probably affected me the most though. Like took quite a lot of time out of year eight which wasn't fun. But um, other than that, I'd say probably done for the positive as well because it's made me think more about like the environment after seeing how much um, we had less environmental impact after society shut down so it's definitely made me think more about like my day-to-day -day choices and how I consume and what I buy and where I buy it from and my sources. I lost my job <laughs> but then I started like hoping uh, working remotely so I can't really complain you 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 saw at the people's faces that they were scared, like especially when it all started in March. Being in one room, it's extremely difficult to for as human beings we need oxygen, we need to go out, etc. So that mentally, yes, it has affected a lot of people. It did kind of at the beginning sort of was playing with me, then I thought, uh-uh, I'm not gonna let this happen to me. Just how it's affected the everyday life and everything being shut and you gotta do what you're gonna do. question for me because I actually work for the government so <laughs> should we say no comment? 
It's just they're taking it. They're just taking the piss to be honest. Like, they're kind of, you know, like they're they're saying, oh, like rule of six, da 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 da. But everyone's just going out doing whatnot, you know. Like no one's listening to them. Just taking the piss. Is that a joke? <laughs> um, can I swear? No. Um, crap. <laughs> Um, they could do a lot better, we know that. I don't think if we have a second uh, peak, I think it will be a lot worse than the first one. I don't think they're going to learn from their mistakes. So yeah, they could do a lot better. I mean, they're the, they're, they're the people who should be helping running the country, right? And keeping us safe, and I don't feel like they've done that. They didn't do it in the best way, but also I wouldn't blame them because I mean, it's, it's unprecedented times. It's like, it's things that people don't know how to really react to that. I don't want to be harsh, but I would say other countries have dealt with it better than UK has. If I say what I need to say, the government will come and get me. <laughs> That's what I need to say, but... It's leading, uh, you know, in August. I, I, the, yeah, to help out was great, but, and then for a while, you know, this was going to happen. Of course it was going to happen. So I felt they sort of misled us. Um, and I think the government, yeah, they haven't been very clear on, on, on the rules and they, they seem to be chopping and changing them all the time. Terribly. My honest opinion is terribly. I mean, things are not direct, it's washed, it's everywhere. Yeah, terribly. I reckon they, they could have gone back. They'll ask sure. those questions. It's not, it's kind of backwards and forwards. I don't think it's serious. Like they're just too scared to, be, to put in stringent measures. Like measures. They're scared of like stepping on people's toes and like I think at the beginning especially we should have locked down properly, closed down the borders and we would have contained things like a lot better but like I'm disappointed personally. Person, my family lives in Germany and they handled the situation like much uh, quicker and faster. If I can be completely honest. Bullshit. They can do better and they can't be all yes men and that's what they are. They're all yes men and that's appalling for, for a society like this, especially in London. Nah, disappointed 100%. There's always room for improvement. I won't bash the government because they've actually put in some pretty good restrictions. I don't think too highly of it. It's a bit, you know, it's much of it. Like, I don't know, they, they react to things a bit too late. They'll delay something for like three weeks. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh yeah, another three weeks, another three weeks. Yeah. Like, yeah. they're reacting more now yeah. than they was in the initial period when there was no research, no nothing. It's just, it's a bit weird. Peaceful protests, things that are really important, like Black Lives Matter and things like that. But I think it was at the wrong time to be protesting. We're in a pandemic and you have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people in Hyde Park during lockdown. It's not a good idea, but I understand why they did it. Why? Why would you want to cause more spread of COVID? It makes no sense. Like, I get it, people are frustrated inside their homes and whatnot, and they want to go outside, of course, like, we miss this, we miss going out. But, you got to be, like, think of the elderly. I think we should just get the bug, I've had it, and uh, I survived, we should just have the bug and get a, a group immunity, herd immunity. I think they're stupid. Same with anti-masking, I think it's just, you should, even though the government aren't really doing what they should be doing, lockdown helps everyone, even if it affects businesses, you shouldn't be protesting, like it's not a conspiracy theory, like there's people dying. This population just don't care. It would be different if it was a war, yeah. I think, Massively. because you can't see it, no one cares. To be honest, you know, I'm going into work maybe once a month and you know, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, my toes crossed that I don't catch something. Um, because if we do, you know, life's still busy. I've still got training to go to. I've still got, you know, work to think about. So if I do catch something, then, you know, that impacts me hugely. So I'm not 100% confident, to be honest. It's dangerous because there's barely any hot weather. So like, and hot weather kills coronavirus. So it's always raining and it's windy. I don't feel comfortable. Um, I don't know because there's people on the train that don't wear masks. Like people are out and about, no one's really wearing masks. It's like all like congregated together, so like nothing has really changed. It feels like nothing's changed. It doesn't even feel like we're in a pandemic right now. It feels like masks are a fashion thing. I don't really believe in the coronavirus, so I don't. I'm, I'm not scared of anything like that. Um, I don't think that we should live our lives in fear. Compared to, compared to Scotland, where I, where I've just moved from. 
what, this is this is so busy. This is incredibly busy. It's almost like COVID doesn't exist. Here. Apparently, the numbers have gone up, so we're going to go into another lockdown sooner than London will. So I'm really dreading that actually. I feel like I have to put my mask on even though I'm in the we just drove around like central London when everything was locked down. Like it was like a ghost town, like something out of like a video game or something. I just arrived yesterday, so coming I got off the tube at Covent Garden and everybody's still sitting in the outdoor bars and having a good time. So I don't know, it's so lovely to see. So I love London. It's not as empty as I thought. It's a bit more empty, but it's not as empty as I was expecting it to be. Yeah, I think they've put some restrictions on like how many people can go on buses. Like, on certain buses in certain areas, they only allow like up to 30 people. What can save? Nothing. God. God. God can save 2020. God can save 2020. Oh no, no, no nothing can save 2020. It's, it's been terrible, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> a miracle. Uh, Kill Boris Johnson. <laughs> hey! That's about it. Like a meteorite or something. Something like that. Bro. Um, love. <laughs> oh man. I, that's a tough one. That's a, I don't know. I mean, we've seen a lot of shit going on this year. Maybe aliens or something. I don't know. Would be nice. <laughs> Doesn't exist. Start again. What did you do? Michael Bublé's Christmas album. <laughs>